In other tutorials, we looked at how and why SAPI estimates poverty for states and counties. In this one, we look at how SAPI creates estimates for school districts using the SAPI County Estimates and additional information from tax returns and other sources. The statistics we need for each school district are total population, number of school-aged children, and the number of those children whose families are in poverty. Total population and number of school-aged children, those ages 5 to 17, are already available from Census Bureau population estimates. The rest of this tutorial looks at the process for estimating the third statistic. Poverty means that annual family income is below official poverty thresholds. These thresholds depend on the number of people in the family and their ages. For example, for a household of four people, with two people under the age of 18, the 2012 poverty threshold is $23,283. If the family's reported annual income is below that amount, all four family members are considered to be living in poverty. To estimate poverty at the school district level, SAPI uses anonymous and confidential information from individual tax returns. We can compute tax return poverty based on adjusted gross income, using the number and type of exemptions to determine family size and number of children. The tax return data SAPI uses typically represents about 85% of the U.S. population. In addition, we have SAPI estimates of number of related children in poverty for all counties, as described in another video and on the SAPI website. We also have population estimates by school district and published American Community Survey estimates of poverty for school districts using pooled data collected over five years. There are some special issues regarding school district geography. Let's look at Arizona as an example. The county around Phoenix, Maricopa County, has a number of school districts. In Maricopa County, there are overlapping elementary and secondary school districts, responsible for specific grades in the same area. For instance, the Buckeye Union High School District covers the same area as four elementary school districts. SAPI estimates are divided among overlapping school districts based on the age ranges that each district covers. The Wickenburg Unified School District crosses the county border, extending into Yavapai County. SAPI estimates are derived separately for the piece of a school district in each county, and the estimates for each school district piece are added at the end to produce an estimate for the entire school district. Because school district boundaries often change, the SAPI program checks with each state's education officials every other year to update boundary definitions. As we discussed previously, we have a count of child tax exemptions for each county from federal income tax returns, and we can determine poverty status using the number of exemptions to indicate family size. Let's say there were 100 child exemptions from a hypothetical county and 25 of those were for children in families in poverty. Now we need to know how many of these tax exemptions are for school-aged children. But tax returns don't tell us age or grade level. We use the most current population estimate, which is an update from the census count, to eliminate the portion of child tax exemptions that are not age relevant. With a proportion in poverty based on the most recent five-year ACS estimate. Now we need to assign these exemptions to school districts. We allocate each relevant child tax exemption to a school district based on the address on the return. Some returns can't be assigned to a specific district by address. For these, we look at ACS five-year poverty estimates. We distribute these additional exemptions to any districts with relevant tax base exemptions below their ACS estimate to minimize differences from the ACS numbers, while staying as close as possible to ACS ratios. In this example, District A is already over the ACS number, so 9 of the 14 go to District B, and 5 to District C. This allows us to calculate a poverty rate based on tax returns, as the example shows for District B. To come up with a final estimate, we need to make some adjustments. 
we arrived at a tax return based poverty rate, but we know that may not count everyone. We have a good estimate, based on the census, of the current relevant child population for each school district, so we multiply that by the poverty rate we derived to get an estimate of the total number of children in poverty for the district. Finally, we ensure that the total for the county matches the SAPI estimate. In this example, we need to reduce each school district estimate by about 15%. SAPI gives us a local and timely view of poverty using a consistent methodology for all U.S. school districts. It is the only source for current single-year estimates for approximately 93% of school districts and has been an important resource for allocation of federal, state, and local funds for more than 15 years. For more detail and to access the data in downloadable form or on an interactive map, look for SAPI on the census.gov website.